Okay, so uh, since I think a lot of people are still joining in, we'll just start. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, for today's uh, session and we're excited to have you all here. So before we dive into today's uh, topic, uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our guest. Uh, we are honored to have Sayam Kumar with us. Uh, Sayam is an AI research engineer at Fedra, like you saw we were talking about what he does over there and what their mission is right now. And uh, so it is a bit off topic, but that's how these sessions are going to go. So feel free to join in wherever you want. So he works on uh, creating AI powered control systems for industrial uh, processes and his work is a testament to the transformative power of AI and he is uh, he's drawn to AI because of the because of how AI positively impacts like a range of fields including healthcare and climate change e-commerce astrom astronomy so uh, today Siam will speak on something that is I think it's uh, like a key to innovation which is like how to open how to contribute to open source and what exactly is open source for me personally i feel that open source is something uh, which is so important because it uh, so when you're working on when a group of people or someone is working on a project they tend to have like tunnel vision because of where they come from and they go in one direction but when you open it up to like a wider range of audience or developers they have another perspective of looking at the same thing which can add to better results and efficiency so it is something that fosters collaboration and community. So uh, Siam will share the fundamentals, the benefits and practical steps to start contributing to open source. So uh, Siam, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to have you here and uh, I'll hand over to you without further ado. Uh, I hope everyone pitches in when they, whenever they have a question or anything like that. And we'll obviously have a Q&A round after that as well. So let's start. Yeah, thank you, Varun, and thank you, Vrij, uh, for organizing this meeting. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, so yeah, let's let's begin. Um, today's topic of discussion would be uh, introduction to open source, or what exactly we mean by open source, how to get started with it, and all. Uh, and I would really like to set the stage by uh, conveying the idea that I would really like this meeting to be a conversation. So. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns on anything that I'm presenting or in general about open source, whenever you have anything in your mind, feel free to either um, type it out or unmute however the way we like. I think we are in limited number of people, so we can uh, take that to an advantage and then ask all the questions. Now, let me figure out the present button. Slide, slide show. No, I'll go this way itself. So, just a second. No, I can't find it. Okay, so uh, about myself, I think Varun has already introduced, but I'm Saim Kumar. I, I graduated two years back. Um, uh, right now, I'm working as a research engineer at Pedra. Um, uh, before joining to Fedra, I have around one year of really good open source experience working under PyMC. Uh, it's uh, an open source organization that deals with um, probabilistic modeling of anything. So it's a really cool library if you want to check it out. So before we go ahead, uh, I would really like to start up with some questions. Uh, uh, just to give me a better idea of uh, the diversity of people over here. Um, uh, how many of you are completely new to open source? That's one question. Uh, I can... Yeah, Nishant. Okay, so you're raising the hands in the spirit of the question. Okay. Cool, that's really good. Uh, I hope this talk would be helpful to you people to begin things. And the second question I have is along the lines of if anyone has any prior experience contributing to open source, if they want to share how things have been, that would be really nice. Not much, but uh, like I just wrote some uh, read, I just corrected some readme file uh, for a 
like uh, it was a kind of you can say a tutorial for a tutorial for it was a repo of a tutorial so i just wrote documentation for it i haven't written much in open source like i haven't coded much you like right? so yep uh, documentation is also very um important aspect of open source in order to pen down all the things uh, regarding the installation of any in library or in general tutorials guides so documentation is also very much valuable in open source so uh, it's it's a starting point i also started with the documentation changes so cool thanks for sharing that perspective nishant uh, moving forward just defining things more formally uh, what is open source it's more along the lines of putting things or building things out in the wild in the open in the public um that's open source we can literally view how of on the open issues in any library we can view what their road maps are uh we can view who all people are involved uh like is it on the top right oh thank you yeah uh, i can't read so thank you so uh back to the topic so we can also see who all people are involved in the open source uh library on what sort of thing we are looking at uh as the uh, the meeting goes i'll also ex- um, go to github and we'll take up any library or framework we like and dig deeper into it or uh, so these days majority of the tools or frameworks that people use are built in open source example the most popular language these days is the python we can see python language in uh, uh being built up in the open source so mongodb is there wordpress is there uh, uh, i think this is linux uh, but this is a cute penguin so uh, it's good to have it now someone would ask me why open source uh, what benefits someone gets when starting to do open source uh, i have included a, lot, a whole lot of memes over here so um, i think i'm able to convey better with memes uh, um, so yeah uh, it's literally free and there are no uh, barriers to entry in open source as, as i look like one just really needs to be uh, uh, one one really needs to see uh, what their interests are uh, explore around the frameworks or what things they want to learn uh, just search them out on google or github and then it will take you to the frameworks or libraries or anything out in uh, in, in the open source world itself that you can look into so no barriers of adoption uh, that one can look into Uh, on the other hand uh, if someone is applying for internships or full time jobs there is often uh, not a barrier but uh, i think it's a curve that someone needs to get to that there are some requirements that needs to get fulfilled via the candidate in order to get the internship or the job so there's a list of requirements there's no such requirement to just start doing open source so that's literally uh, a really big sign really big plus sign to me um this is a very controversial meme but i still uh, added it because i really liked it uh i think the uh, a whole lot of value is brought is brought along when uh someone starts to see their work getting recognized by other people let's say we put out a uh, a, a project on uh, the github or gitlab and someone like what we what we are doing and they immediately hit a follow button um so that gives me a lot of belief that i am doing something good along the lines of my work itself um so uh feeling super powerful when my any project is shared and someone uh um uh, sees that my work is getting helpful to to others so if 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 you are of a person that derive joy by um uh, making the lives of people easier by doing the work what you like you can take your project or implementation and put that out on uh, github on in the open source and then have 
uh, documentation guides on how someone can use that thing. So it really empowers me at the very least. And uh, I found a very pop, not popular, I don't know, this was a very good quote to, uh, to see that to succeed, you must share your learnings. Uh, I really value this uh, perspective of things. Uh, so uh, even I try to, uh, there's a blog post of mine where I try to put down all my learnings. So uh, it really helps to uh, bring clarity in my own thoughts itself that um, when I'm sharing uh, the learnings, it's help, it's helping everyone, me and the person who is reading or learning from this. We are new, we are new people joining. So yeah, thank you for joining. Another reason why open source is uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's a place where you will be able to find like-minded people. Uh, example, let's say you are learning to do something with the databases. You go to GitHub and you you start finding around uh, some this database named MongoDB. And other people are also trying to learn uh, or improve um, this MongoDB database itself. So it is very common to see people uh, as a collaboratively building, sharing ideas, uh, discussing different ideas as well uh, in the open source. So that's another plus reason for me to begin in open source. The other reason is you get immediate feedback of what you're working on. Uh, so this is what I see is a different is a difference uh, when someone is in the college and um, they build a uh, anything new and they just keep it to their uh, laptop itself. So what I uh, really recommend is uh, you put your code or the, the project you have built in the open source and GitHub itself. Uh, that's one way to get feedback from people that uh, the code is open, anyone can see it. Um, now there often comes the question, where should we go about contributing in open source? Uh, my two cents on this is, uh, um, let's say you pick any library to learn, uh, you can do that following the documentation or, uh, tutorials on YouTube or on the medium website. Uh, one of the things that really fascinates me about open source is, um, we can literally learn a framework by contributing to it. Example, uh, the PyMC framework I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I learned about a whole lot how it works underneath the hood by uh, improving the documentation or uh, by um, adding small feature requests to it or building the feature requests, then shipping those feature requests, and then eventually moving on to some uh, bigger feature implementations. So that's an, one way where you can contribute to open source and whatsoever library or framework interests you just go deeper into that. You can also explore things. So yeah, this is, uh, I really wanted to be this session a really hands-on one. Um, I'm gonna open GitHub and then we can uh, explore uh, any framework or library we like. So I'd like to open the floor and ask people around of anything they would like to see we getting deeper into right now with respect to any framework or tooling or anything they are looking to learn in future. Uh, just type it out a name and I uh, share the thing on GitHub. Example, if you want to learn about NumPy or if you want to learn about PyTorch or some computer vision library uh, or anything else in general, Um, any names in the chat? Maybe I cannot see it. In call messages. No, I can't see anything, but no problem. I can just. Yeah, cybersecurity tools, they are really good. Uh, Okay, let's take it to cyber security tools. I, I'll just type it out. Cyber, uh, can you all see the GitHub? Yeah, it's visible now. Awesome. So yeah, um, uh, I just typed out in Google uh, 
cyber security tool on github and yeah it took me to some links so yeah this is the little way of figuring out your toolings and learnings of what you think you want to learn so i'm i'm going to select a repository that has some active contributions going on because it will help to set the stage um a little less aware about cyber security but uh oh github now ah, there we go let's let's pick something okay so um i know ovasp is something related to cyber security uh, i don't know what exactly it is but i'm aware of uh, this organization and they have this project yeah, if someone wants to say something okay so yeah i am yeah, in their repository or collection of all the their source files and over here uh, what we can see is uh, their website link which is really nice and one can find a whole lot of details about a project by going to their readme file what this project is all about um, all the documentation links are there how to set up that library uh, the one we are looking at is the net tracker and if someone really wants to get started immediately in open source what i recommend is going to the issues section of any um, repository and there are usually issues tagged as good first ones so these usually are the issues that are laid up by the project maintainers for literally anyone to come in as um, easy first task to solve i'm going to see if they have any good first issues labels you can see i clicked down the label and there is a good first one now there are no open good first ones but there is a one close we can take a look over there so issue is something um github issues or the issues on gitlab are generally the improvements or uh, improvements that someone wants to track to uh, their repository or their uh, plan of action or this even can be the issues that people face when working with the library yeah this is a closed issue because someone solved it and launched uh, a pull request to solve the issue we can take some uh, another uh, example uh, and then that will help to get to the stage so this is a deep learning library um, that i often use this is nimpy torch and they have a whole lot of issues open which means they uh, they have a whole lot of work uh, to do so if i go to label and i select the good first ones to begin with or oh, there are so many labels i need to filter good there you go so yeah you can see excuse me there are around 80 finish issues that someone has literally as minimum barrier to entry as it can be to just start working on it so these are uh, the issues so so uh, i i i often see or uh, receive a question how someone wants to begin contributing in open source this is this would be my best advice that um, go to anything that interests you on github maybe the library that you are working on it can be the library that you are planning to learn um, and go to their issues section find a good first task to begin with and you have all you need um, alongside you can start reading the documentation on readme you can explore the website what this project is all about to gain more interest about it and yeah uh, that's uh, a way to uh, set us uh, to get the uh, uh, to mark the first steps of your journey in open source
yep uh, let's let's see what else i can uh, show you around so now pull requests are the implementation of the issues or the features that are portrayed out in this issue section so pull requests are actual code changes or documentation changes um security wiki i think these are less important as compared to these three main tasks so code is where all the code lies the issues are the issues and pull requests are the uh, improvements i think that's all i wanted to share maybe i can go to github my github yeah it, github also has their search uh, their search option so, so you can really custom search to your interest and take things from there okay so that was on uh, let's explore on github now uh, i also receive some questions uh, along the lines of um, how hard will i be judged if i ask questions in the github issue section or if i ask someone or if you get stuck how would i be judged uh, or it's generally a natural tendency uh, just give me a second i'm going to close the door i think it's a natural tendency of humans to be afraid of being getting judged uh, so what i see open source is a really uh, inclusive and uh, valuable place because um, people are always there to help you out so even on the issues section if you really ask someone like can you point uh, if you ask the maintainers of the repository like, can you give me some pointers how to go about solving the issue as a way to start your open source contributions they will literally help you out in, with the uh, accurate documentation or they will they can also point you out to the appropriate place in the code that you want to change so really my advice is don't be afraid to ask questions because people are always looking uh, or the project maintainer should be very specific uh, project maintainers are always looking for new people to be onboarded on their repository to help out because open source is literally uh, not as no i will i will not say this uh, yeah pe people are always just there to uh, onboard more people uh, to their repository so that's why they have uh, the good first issues at the very first place why would the project maintainers have uh, the good first issues they can do it themselves it is just for people to be onboarded so uh, once i realized that over the years that the good first issues are for us to or for newcomers to um, for newcomers to eventually get started with the repository uh, i felt uh, i see my fear of being getting judged going away this is also another slide that i put up uh, that talks about what not to do in open source uh, there's some good memes coming so um, uh, be ready for that um, i can't see the reactions of people for some reason but yeah uh, this is one screenshot i took from the tensorflow repository this is another very popular deep learning library that people are using these days or they have been using for the last so many years uh, so this is literally someone complaining about they hate this library uh, this is what i recommend to not do in open source uh, because these uh, these libraries have been put up by countless hours of people working on the code itself without seeing the immediate monetary uh, um, monetary effects of them so yeah if if you really hate some, something that you see in open source and people react a lot to these statements uh, who doesn't like uh, controversies and stuff so what i really like so someone should instead do is rather provide feedback that what didn't you like in that particular repository because if, if you don't share what you didn't like there are no chances of improvement so share what you didn't like and then uh, ask help from the maintainers that something is there that needs to be improved 
see how you can improve that. So yeah, provide feedback what you didn't like. Um, now let me read this slide uh, or the, the 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 thing over here. So yeah, um, I think a lot of um, people see uh, that the value is brought when doing the open source contributions by uh, fixing the documentation, which is true. Uh, but what I feel like is uh, it's a way to get started to eventually contributing more and sig significantly towards whatsoever library or framework or anything if you are starting something of your new itself. So what I would really like to say is fixing documentation and the typos are really, really good. Uh, but if you really want to have a significant impact uh, in anything or a library that uh, you want to contribute in, I would really recommend to follow this meme in reverse, that you start off with the contribution and then you uh, start looking at the uh, issues that are there on the GitHub. And then uh, with the help of the developers who are already there in the repository making contributions from years, we take their help and then we contribute to their um, repository itself. Yeah, this is another screenshot I took from GitHub, uh, which is along the lines of someone asks, were you able to resolve the issue? And someone uh, shared that uh, they decided they are the maintainers of the project. They are the member. They decided to share that they didn't care. Uh, and people uh, with all the reactions are over here. So uh, I think the most important learning from here is that the project maintainers are always um, less of uh, human power or manpower to work on the issues or to improve the repository uh, over there. So ask the people if you want to contribute uh, or if they need help and volunteer to be involved. So even if you uh, tell to the open source maintainer that, hey, I'm volunteer to um, I'm learning this XYZ and I, I found your repository to be interesting. Can you share some ways uh, that I can volunteer to start working or eventually contribute to your uh, repository? So just be open, be, be more yourself that uh, you want to be involved and eventually help out. And this is really valuable uh, in, in open source itself. Like get more involved uh, and take help from other people to get started. As any other thing you are, uh, it's like any other thing you are trying to start up new. Uh, for, uh, so this, this is what, what I all, all had, but uh, I have one more thing to share with you, uh, which is before I open the, the floor to, to, to questions, that there are a lot of, you know, put up uh, or find this thing in Google that, um, give me a second, open the programs, images, there we go. See, Google is so fast, I just type it out what I want and I get to the information. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit. So. So if you want to start anything new, there are two ways uh, I look up at things. In general, it's, it's irrespective of open source itself. If you want to learn, let's say, how to cook, one way is you're going to ask your family member who knows how to cook, and they can guide you better on how to cook. For example, if I want to uh, cook anything at home, I'm living away from home for the past one, one year or something. I usually ring up my mom and say how to cook this particular dal. Um, that's one thing. So asking someone and then having a structured way of your learnings is one aspect of doing it. The second aspect of learnings that I see is uh, just doing it on your own, making it your own path, figuring out things as you go. Both options or both ways of learning are 
add, I, I think, uh, a personal choice to, to the person. What I feel is, uh, me as a person, I really like structured ways of learning at times. So these are some open source programs that really provide a structured way of someone getting into open source or contributing more significantly or building their profile in open source. So that's why I took the example of uh, me learning to cook and my mom helping out as a way of a structured learning because she can always uh, point me what things I'm doing wrong. So this is just uh, all the programs over here. You can just Google and find out all the programs, what they really do and uh, what their scope is all about. But the main thing is uh, they, they help out to uh, or they lay out proper guides on how you can be involved uh, inside uh, any of uh, the programs over here mentioned. Example, what contribution you need to make how you need to build up uh, the profile of yours in order to be get accepted into any of the programs. And once you get accepted, the good thing is you will be paired with a member of uh, the, uh, the repository or the organization itself. Example I was talking about, or I was paired uh, with a member of the PIMC organization that I was a, uh, that I uh, got and enrolled is not the right word, but uh, uh, I, I started working with the PIMC organization under the GSOC program. Um, and uh, I, I got paired with a mentor uh, to help me out on the project that I wanted to build. So, and they really helped me in providing me the timely feedback, uh, sharing the things that I eventually need to build on, uh, reviewing the tasks. So these are all structured learnings. Uh, if you really like structured learnings, please explore all the, uh, the programs over here. Uh, another benefit of these programs is they provide, uh, or they also provide um, stipend uh, to it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the stipend of all these programs, uh, but you can find this information very easily online. I was a part of this Google's Summer of Code uh, organization. Uh, and there are many more there. So this is uh, very Google's season of dogs is very dedicated to improving dog documentation. Um, so you can also check that out. Linux Foundation is, I believe, has an umbrella number of uh, projects and uh, repositories that one can look into. MLS Fellowship, I believe, something is initiated by Facebook. Uh, not really sure of the details. Uh, yeah, the rest one more can look into. Can you please tell something more about like Google Summer of Code? Like if I want to take part next year, how can I do so? Like what are the steps? Like what things I need to work on, etc. Can you please let me know? Like yes, some yes. details. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, these were all my slides that I wanted to share uh, or in general about open source. Um, but yeah, coming to uh, the GSOC, um, I think the very first question that I asked myself is, um, oh, or even before that, I knew about the timelines of GSOC, that the, the timelines are from uh, roughly we need to submit our application in March. And then uh, the results of the applications come around in May. And you have the entire period of summers to um, work on the uh, the intended project that you have sent in uh, uh, your doc. So, yeah, having that timeline in mind, what I started out in December or January was looking into like, what things I want to learn, what things I'm generally interested in. Uh, and that gave me a direction of what projects and what organizations I can look into. So, uh, I can give you my example itself. So, I was more along the lines of interested in doing some maths and doing something in machine learning. I think these were the two main things that I wanted to do in summers. And then I started looking up all the organizations that or the, uh, the organizations or the repositories that have been involved in the previous year uh, GSOC itself. So I was in, enrolled in 2020. And then I started looking up all the projects that are uh, enrolled in, let's say, 2018, 19, 
and i sense what all organizations are coming um what are uh, the different features that they are building over the years and what would be their intended features uh, that they would put out so gsoc is along the lines of pairing the organization with the students so the organizations like i show you like i showed you the, the pymc one or even the the pi tots they are big organizations uh, who have bundle of features that they wanted to build and they usually have less of uh less uh, hands on deck to work on uh, the issues or the features so what gsoc helps to do is in january it it opens up the applications of the organizations that who all wants students or in general people to work on their features to so google puts up uh, um, some way for application for organizations to be enrolled in so pymc and pytor not pytor i think uh, but there are a lot more wiki media is one uh, linux foundation is another if i recall so even before march it is the work on the organizations that they put up their applications in uh, the gsoc portal and uh, and they uh or they get accepted that uh, they get accepted that google will sponsor and will give the stipend to the students who will be working on the projects with these organizations during the summers so in january that thing happens and what i did during december and january was once i have figured out on a high level what are things i want to learn I started looking into previous year repositories and ideas and features, and then narrowed down my search into uh, um, the repositories that I really started liking. And then once I found a library that really interested me, uh, that was back in January, I think time time frame. Um, I started using that library, like reading the documentation, what this project is all about, what the project will look like. I went there to the uh, GitHub issues section, started solving the issues. So I think that was the step two. The first step was figuring out what my interests are. Second step is once we have a repository, we dig deeper into it. Started contributing, asking the people. So to gain more trust of the people who uh, who are the maintainers of uh, the repository itself. That was step two. Me getting more involved. And the third step is about the the project idea that you want to build over in the summers. You need to write a proposal or documentation or or a, a detailed document on how you want to build uh, the idea. So it's a proposal plan that you need to send out in March, I think, uh, ending March or early April, that uh, stating that you are interested in working in this you have done some prior contributions working in this organization uh, or the same organization you are applying to uh, and there are pretty well documented um, guidelines on how you want to write uh, uh, the, the the project plan that you want to do in summers so you need to look up the the project in a lot more detail that you want to do because eventually i believe it will be really new for someone who are really starting out new it was a case for me or if you already know what you want to build it will be very easy to build up a doc for yourself so yeah step 3 is about building the proposal doc and sending it out yeah step 4 i think it is up to uh, so after all the applications get submitted it is up to the i think month and a half period of time frame that these applications get reviewed and my general advice is uh, to not just keep waiting just be contributing in the same way as you have been doing before uh, to the organization and yeah that's and in the last step 5 you get uh, accepted uh, if you have really put thoughts into how you would like the project plan and uh, how, how you would like the project to eventually play out during the summers is your plan solid enough 
uh, that that will eventually work out. And and yeah, these are all the main things. Starting from your interest, then digging deeper into the repositories you feel like based on the past years, and then building up a, a project plan, submitting the plan, keep contributing to it, and there will be people to help you out and guidelines to help you out. That's the thing. Thank you for the brief answer. Just one more question I have. That uh, what is your thought process? Like open source repositories, as I have seen, are like literally huge. So what is your thought process while understanding the repository when you start contributing? Like I have to contribute to some repository. I have to contribute to some project. But it is like too huge. Like what is your thought process in understanding it? Yeah, thanks for the great question. Um... I, th I think my thought process is really along the lines uh, that it's a great ocean of all the code that we need to understand and taking one step at a time really helps. So uh, I think starting with the documentation, getting an understanding of what the project is all about really helps. And um, if, the, if looking into the eventual code becomes really daunting, um, what I usually look up is I open the GitHub issues section, pick the topic of whatsoever issue is all about, and then just try to understand that part of the code base itself. So let's say if uh, the uh, GitHub issue is about extending a function to improve in its API in some way. So I would go to that function. I would take a a sort of a narrowed bottom up approach that I would pick from where I want to start in the bottom some function or some API and then I try to figure out all the other parts that that's going to touch this function. So I'm going to start from small and then I'm going to take it one step at a time, understanding one function at a time, how this function will be invoked uh, from the other parts of the code base and taking it from there. So. My, my advice that usually helps me and uh, I also recommend to people that if you're starting out in a completely new repository, uh, just take one aspect of thing that you want to learn and improve and take it from there. Uh, another example I have is let's say um, I want to learn linear algebra. Uh, I can go to the PyTorch deep learning library and they have this dedicated section on linear algebra. Uh, they have a dedicated folder in their entire repository that talks about linear algebra and has implementation. So I can take that, start it from there, figure out files one by one, uh, also look up the documentation and also look up at the test cases because test cases really help to get an understanding of uh, how this function will be or this part of the code will be actually invoked. So uh, test cases are really helpful. Documentation is really helpful. Starting small is helpful. And in case you are stuck, if, if, you, if you are struggling to understand a particular piece of the code, even if you start starting small, ask for help. People are there to help out. Um, um, yeah, I think these are all the things. Uh, I'm thinking I'm finding. Yes, start small, ask for help wherever you, you, you find stuck. Start with some GitHub issue and then uh, go deeper into it. And then uh, once we have solved a bunch of issues, uh, you you will get a some rough. You will begin to get a rough understanding of what the entire ocean of repository is all about. Okay, so I'll have a look at it. So next time I'll try to understand or start. Like... Yeah, I think and and finding out everything I think is a. Uh, is a very um, time intensive. I think time intensive is not the right, but uh, yeah, it's a very involved process to figure out everything in in knowing uh, what part of the code base you want to start from, how you want to start with that. Do you want to look up at some YouTube tutorial if someone has already made on a particular part of the code base? or if there is good enough documentation on that. It's just that uh, I, I want to convey that don't get overwhelmed with uh, whatsoever thing you are trying to start out in open source, like whether you are digging deeper into one particular part of the 
the code base, uh, go deeper into it, and then ask for help. Uh, and don't get overwhelmed. It's just uh, that you you should continue digging deeper and deeper uh, to eventually gain, a, not gain, but rather learn a whole lot about what the repositories are about. So continuous learnings, not get overwhelmed, start small. It's time involved, so just accept the fact that it's going to be daunting. Uh, but eventually, uh, just embrace the all the overwhelming mess and then take it from there.